Would you like to support Cubs Out Loud? One way is to join us over on Patreon. For as little as a buck a month, patrons get early access to our shows, the pre and post show, and various other rewards. You can learn more at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Thanks to all of our patrons for their support in making this podcast. It's Sunday, May 8th, 2022. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Don't hurt nobody with your bad self. And welcome to Cubs Out Loud, the Bear Podcast with the Terminal Link, episode number 647. And we're all wearing appropriate shirts, which are available over on Zazzle.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. I'm so proud of my co-hosts that I didn't even have to prompt them for this particular <laughs> show. Um, I'm the only and, one tank top version of this, but hey, there's. A, I, and, I also live in in Texas where it is currently 90 degrees and we had a high of 70 97 this today. So, yeah, and I'm gonna say. This was perfectly, totally random because Damon picked the shirt out of his closet and wasn't 100% sure what the topic was. <laughs> nice. Well, it's good. Um, it will discuss them more towards the end of the show, but we're all wearing our consent as my foreplay shirts and in different varieties, so mm-hmm. to speak. Um, so, hard. yeah. Well, we have, a, we have a couple of different options. Um, so... Let's talk about consent. Um, this is a little bit of a different twist, though. So um, as a little bit of a do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do, like flashback kind of thing. Um, so it's been almost five years since we had our most recent Let's Talk About Kink episodes on consent and respect. Those were actually called Consent and Respect 2 um, and then there was a part one and a part two. It was over two uh, weeks. And we had a whole series of guests. Um, Chester was with us at the time as a co-host. We had uh, Brady on at the time. We Derek. had Ray. Um, this is contextually, historically. Um, and Ms. Tammy and Chess. Um, and there have been a number of changes that have taken place since then um, in terms of, like, persons and, and that kind of thing. But... Uh, Prior to that, at previous two years, we had done an LTAK about um, consent and respect. Um, so this is a little different. We, we're fast forwarding. We're getting back to the present. It's 2022. So it's a number of years later. And um, given the COVID-19 pandemic, at least it seems to me, and I don't know if, the, if both of you would agree or not, that people are being more bold in their lives in terms of expressing their opinions and um, taking actions. Um, So, and I'm seeing it from a particular lens, that being the U S political landscape. Um, It seems to me that people are more emboldened to speak in terms of like conservative progressive like party concepts. Those are the two major political parties within our nation. But I think everything kind of like it blends into each other. So what it kind of comes down to, as I was thinking, is do we think the practice of recognizing and giving consent um, plays a factor outside of kink and sexual activities? But what I'm putting forward for discussion is that people don't know what consent is and they don't even consider it. Mm. Ergo complications. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. Well, there's that. Just drop that on our laps. <laughs> well, so as, to, as some, for some 
like a little bit of like uh, context, I guess, or definition, just so everyone knows, consent can be a noun or a verb. Um, as a noun, it's considered permission for something to happen or an agreement to do something. Um, and this concept like between differing individuals or groups of individuals. Um, and then the verb is just simply the giving permission um, for something to happen. So uh, the reason why I wanted to talk about that is, is I feel like we're in a strange moment that people really feel like they have individual liberties and they have these rights and they can um, take action or say certain things without like consequence. Mm -hmm. And to me that gets really murky because I'm like, um, there was a time in our country where we talked about like, um, what do we call them? Manners um public <laughs> like you know what i mean like there there was just a way that you presented yourself for lack of better reference like how we were raised as a nation i'm thinking of the 50s 60s into the 70s 80s about like how you comport yourself how you carry yourself like you didn't thrust yourself upon others let me put a little asterisk on that um <laughs> And like, you know, I feel like that that's kind of not really a part of the the society like behaviorally now is like, you know, people feel much more emboldened to just kind of say what they want to say. Um, and it, so it feels more much more individualistic. OK, so the reason for the asterisk was just to recognize that like America is a mighty flawed system. It has like lots of historical like context of bad things taking place. So I don't want to like dismiss that and act like, you know. We were practicing homophobia and bigotry and racism and all sorts of other bullshit in our history. Like all the, all things given. Um, that said, go ahead, Damon. Um. Hi, oh boy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't. I'm not sure where exactly to begin with this, but I will start with a. Um, like a yes, absolutely, in a sense. Um, people have gotten bolder and more emboldened to 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 to, to be blunt, violate consent um, because I think in part, like you said, some people do not know what it means, and in addition. Um, because they feel inclined to get what they want. Mm. Um, we've 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 gone through, especially in the United States, I'll give that little caveat. Um, several years of um, people getting away with things. Um, we had a, and I don't like, again, I know this is kind of political, but I don't, uh, we had a former president who literally talked about grabbing women, mm. you know, by their, by their, by the lady parts that I forgot about that nugget. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. Like we've literally had a president the top tier of our um, political landscape be like, well, I can get away with anything. He said it in more than one occasion. You know, mm. he talked about so many different things that he could get away with or has gotten away with. And it makes sense that part of that then leads to kind of snowballs. Like if the leader of our country, the United States, can quote unquote, get away with these things, I should be able to get away with it too. Because, hey, it's, if he can do it, why can't I? Mm. Um, and again, I don't like thinking that way, but that's something that I feel has, has happened um, in the recent years. Am I saying it as though that's the only thing? No, I know that there have been plenty of other things that have gone on. Um, in our society in general that have kind of allowed this um, 
I keep saying violation of consent, but I don't think that's what I exactly mean. I think people don't think about it or think about consent in these moments because they don't feel they need they don't need to because they may like may they not know um what it means and what happens should someone not be willing um yeah it's difficult to think of it that way but that's sort of where my mind is going is that we as a recent society have kind of been, like you said, emboldened to do these um, things without consequence. And because there's no consequence, we think they think it's okay, or we think it's okay. Um, yeah. So from the sounds of it, what I would take it as your perspective is a behavior that was exhibited and witnessed Mm -hmm. has given some individuals what they think is license to replicate that or emulate that because there was no real consequence for that action mm -hmm. um, yeah. or not as not a severe one per se maybe yeah yeah you get smattered around the you know the interwebs and the social meets for a while and then it kind of quietly goes away and then it's on until the next thing or the next thing mm. um which I will say that we live in a in a highly, um, I don't know if the, well, I'm just, things move quickly. I guess is what I really, really was trying to say. Um, that it, it's difficult to find focus or to consistently stay with a certain kind of energy or um, concept or idea. I guess because there's another ooh shiny. Mm -hmm. You know, there's another thing that comes up, you know, on social media, there's another video, there's another like, you know, gif, there's another whatever, you know, that, that I think people f lose interest or focus quickly. Yeah. In that case, which is interesting. I guess I hadn't really thought about that, but you bring up a good point. I feel that if someone, you know, does something and no one calls them out on it, um, holds them accountable to it then yeah. you end up with difficulty in yeah. knowing whether or not that's okay. Yeah. It seems okay because nobody said anything. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. What do you think, Jeff? I mean, I personally haven't run into anything in particular in regards to this type of situation, uh, but I can get where people are coming from with that. Like, the president that shall not be named. Um, not even putting it. Not even living as a. <laughs> <laughs> uh, basically, he was because people. We the, the, there's a phrase leading by example, and he mm -hmm. was an awful, awful example. Which gave the people being like, hey, we were able to elect somebody like this, so I could do anything that you would do. And his arrogant ass would never, ever do. That is such a good statement, yes. That's so factual. So I, I think that's one of the the points where it's like, I don't need to because I'm entitled. Uh, so I think, it, it, I think there's an entitlement thing going on there. <laughs> For those of you that are not able to watch the video, David is like point, pointing out that this, that right this, there. This, this, yes, this. You gave me, you gave the perfect word, which was entitlement. entitlement. That and, is, and, and I was agreeing, David. I was just about to say before you started pointing, or as you were pointing, I'm like, I think Jeff hit the nail on the head. Like how disappointing it is that people feel emboldened, empowered, um, entitled. That they can speak freely without consequence mm -hmm. for action, weirdly, or minimal yeah. consequence, I mm -hmm. guess. Yeah. We've, yeah, Jeff, uh, we live, we have, yeah, nail on the head, like, absolutely. Like, that's the thing. Um, to put it kind of into context, what many people think, like, people have had these thoughts. We know this. We know this, especially in this country. Like, there are 
people who have the worst mentalities in regards to all of this. And some of them are literally predators and, and what have you. And what happened, you know, some years ago um, is we had someone, like you said, that for lack of a better phrase, gave them permission because of their title and because of their their um, not facing any consequences or many consequences, it gave them permission to let those internal feelings, not necessarily saying like deep down in, inside, I'm thinking maybe just right under the surface for some, it gave them that permission to present this thing. It was it was a unintentional to bring it back into context, an unintentional blanket consent. And I don't well, maybe not unintentional, <laughs> but mm. there was this. It became the permission became the the blanket consent for these people to the these people to to just say and do whatever they wanted um now as we've mentioned and we've kind of said several times it wasn't that it wasn't without consequences but sometimes those consequences were minimal um and uh we also know that in addition to that people are paying attention now. You know, um, yeah, people are, are, are acting out against those that do not understand or do not rep respect consent. Mm. Um, we see it happen all the time. And if you want to go into, like, to bring it in the context of, of, the LGBTQ communities, um, you know, events are being called out for their lack of consent um, and are being avoided by many people who wish to not be a part of those events that choose to, for one reason or another, um, not provide consequences for others' actions. Um, events are having conversations and devoting time and energy and effort to bringing consent to the forefront because it is conversations that need to be had. Um, education and training that needs to be provided to the masses so we don't end up having issues at events with consent. Mm. Interesting. Um, uh, I'll, I'll put a perfect kind of like spin on it. In recent years, um, since they letter, because it's local, um, um, a local event that has, it started a consent band, um, B-A-N-D, um, model. So you come into the event, whatever, whatever they're doing, and almost immediately you're, you can see a table where there are consent bands and there's posters and flyers talking about what it means, what each one means. Um, it's a simple traffic light situation, um, traffic light um, sitch where red means no, stop, don't, mm -mm. yellow means maybe or yield or like ask first, please ask first. And green means I'm mostly okay with everything, but you should still ask, you know, just to be sure. Um, mm -hmm. Simple things are okay. I think hugs and stuff are generally, you know, traversed throughout, you know, many communities. Um, when I was at NAB in February, um, um, bring him up again, Paul Lanner, um, as part of his Hunters Against Hate booth, was passing out the consent bans. Mm -hmm. um, 
and you saw them throughout the weekend. Um, so it it it's becoming a conversation that is being had, and it's I'm glad it's happening. And the more we talk about it and put the information out there, I think the better we all will be. Mm -hmm. Jeff, from what you were saying, do you feel like um, the behaviors like that were exhibited, like of that entitlement, does that seem, I don't know, like I keep having this image in my head of like dominoes. Do you know what I mean? Like, like because one thing or two things or three things, do you know what I mean? Like it mm. starts this, I guess, ripple effect or replication. Yeah, it, 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 it's really a lot of, uh, yeah, we had the, the phrase great power comes from great responsibility, which isn't exactly the phrase that was actually from Spider-Man. Right. It's just it's a, what was it? A thing. <laughs> like it's actually Berenstain Bears, not Berenstain Bears, that sort of thing. Um, ah. uh, but I I think it's when somebody gets in that position and uh, power corrupts, although he was already kind of a corrupt person anyways. Mm -hmm. to that. <laughs> um, and just because somebody in who was like that could get into that sort of position gave all these people made them feel that th they've been given permission to ignore consent and and that's where where problem comes in and now we have to relearn uh, get people to relearn it which is sad honestly well, like the whole well, whole consent bans thing at uh some consent bad thing it's a great idea it's sad to have to do that i, uh, I, I think I, I understand. i'm not saying saying well that's kind of a dumb idea people should just be no. asking anyways right, but right. i think that's actually a great idea because people are dumb and yeah <laughs> i get what you i i get what you mean like i i i get it like why do we have to do this when this should be human nature almost i'm not mad i'm just disappointed <laughs> well i mean this this kind of brings up about like the concept of manners mm -hmm. you know how a person is raised to be polite be you know generous to you know um uh assist others if possible like so i you know i was shopping earlier today i go to the store i go up to the door and there was like three people initially, uh, I think it was, look, it appeared to me as a mother and two children, you know, and, and even though there are two doors to go in, I had pulled open the, my right door and they started heading through the opening. So I just held the door open for them to come through. And I think one of the kids said, thank you, which the way I was raised, that would be a proper behavior because I did something that for you, even though that wasn't my intention, because <laughs> the idea of opening the door was for me to walk through. But instead of them opening the other, their right hand door, my left, to come out on their own, they just went around. Um, now, after these three, four more people appeared. So I'm holding the door for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Like, and there was a part of me that was like, okay, I'm not the usher. Like, I'm not the greeter. <laughs> I'm not here to hold the door open the whole time. I wasn't uh, upset. There was just a small part of me that was like, okay, this this clown car circus routine needs to stop. Like, you know, y'all get You're annoyed more than, than... Correct, 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 correct. Um, the reason I give that example is, is I thought it was interesting that, like, of the first three, someone did say thank you, and then the next four who were not with the first three, nobody said anything. And so it stuck in my mind because I knew we were going to be discussing this today, and I was kind of like, to me, that's like a, a social grace kind of like manners thing. But it's interesting how it dovetails into this, this concept of, Jeff, you bring up, you know, I think the most accurate word, which is entitlement, that people, um, you know, feel entitled to things. But I wonder if it's like they take things for granted. Like they just make a presumption 
And because maybe they were not called on it, um, were not told in their upbringing, you know, that you thank somebody for doing something for you. Um, you know, especially when it's unintended or unexpected. Mm -hmm. But then it also brings up an interesting concept to me as both of you were talking. I feel like we've gotten to do a strange vortex of hypocrisy. Mm. And here's why I say that, because I think back to, uh, I'm going to say up to 2015, <laughs> just as a time frame okay. prior to that. If like that, what was what happened then that seemed outlandish or like disappointing or, you know, just like in terms of like the media and the presentation and the things that we focus on, it seems like there were things that were just absolutely so important. And now that we've we've, you know, forwarded almost like a decade later and it seems like nothing is that extreme or of consequence. I don't know how to explain it. It's so mm -hmm. strange to me. Um, this is exactly the example that's in my mind. And I, <laughs> I'm just going to say it. So during the Obama presidency, there was the tan suit incident. Okay. Do you remember this? Vaguely, yes. But it's... So President mm -hmm. wore a two-piece tan suit. And you would have thought it was World War Three that like <laughs> that the world was coming to an end. How dare the president of the United States wear a tan suit? They only wear blue or black. And that apparently was like such a big deal. Blah, blah, blah. We fast forward all the way to this point. And I was like, and, and like back then it was kind of silly. And, and now it looks so weird to be like, wait, that was an issue. Mm hmm. Like to me, that's what I mean by the hypocrisy. Like that's an issue because they're maybe they're a bigger, way bigger, so big, like prehistoric size fish. Like seriously, <laughs> that's yeah. that's a thing. Wasn't there a cheeseburger incident or somewhere somewhere around there too? Yeah, I think there was. Like so, it's it's ironic to me, like how people get butt hurt or get into outrage or have opinions about things, and I look back and I'm like, but, but I'm like, but. That was a thing like it's so I'm very intrigued by this concept of how like the whole social behavioral needle, I guess, has shifted and the things that we focus on and we get upset about and that kind of stuff. And there's a part of me that like is this, you know, concept of implied consent or informed consent. It's like, are people aware that um, I have my own life? I, ha I live my own thing. And I'm not here for you to come busting into it. Now, in saying that, I realize it's a double-edged sword because that's what I think some people claim is you don't have a right to tell me like X, Y, Z about how I live my life, which is which is kind of dicey because there's a part of me that's like, well, while I understand the concept of, you know, your individual liberty, um, there are consequences for actions. And that's the part, I guess, it seems to be missing as we've been discussing is, you know, like one, do people understand the concept of consent, whether it be implied, um, implicit, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. um, but more importantly, that in that, you know, or com what comes with that is a recognition of like, I don't know, someone's individual, whatever that may be. Mm -hmm. Um, I guess their individuality. I don't know. Like, and it might, yeah. and it might be things that don't really blend well yeah. together. Yeah. I, I think I get what you're saying. Like I, you know, we all are, you know, we like to say we're adults and we, we can make our own decisions and that's kind of true. And that a lot of ways, but the, the thing that I think about the most when I think about consent is that just because I can make a choice for me, doesn't really mean I get to make the choice for you. Um, and I know, like, talking and, and having these conversations and discussing consent can be complicated and can be um, kind of pouncing on people's individual, you know, individual freedoms. But the usual thing with consent for me has always been that it is not just about you. It's about someone else. 
You have that, your own. That's fair. You have, yeah. Like I can say, and I'm not saying this, I'm just saying, I can go into a ho- go, go hit, get a hotel room, throw a, 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 a seat on, not more Craigslist, but you know, that whole thing, put an ad out. It'd be like, do whatever you want with me, yada, yada, yada. And that's okay. That's kind of what I'm doing. However, again, once another person becomes involved, I have a right to be like, no, I don't want what you're doing to me. You can leave. Mm -hmm. You know, or... Um, you know, like, please keep going because I really like that kind of thing. Like, you know, those are kind of the, you know, that's the way it could be or should be. Um, that other person, though, can make decisions for themselves on what they're willing to do to someone who is, quote unquote, not uh, allowing whatever to be done to them. And they can make conscious decisions hopefully, um, on what their limits are. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Well, and I, and I think one of the key things that we discussed previously, every time we've discussed this particular topic, whether it be about kink or sex, um, or in this case, uh, outside of those circles or those realms is communication. Mm -hmm. I think is like key for people understanding what a person is accepting of and what a person isn't accepting of. So, you know, whether or not this is something that I choose to be involved in or not. Um, And, and the fact that a person has the individual responsibility um, for themselves, but also like within their own personal awareness, like, like that they have their own ability to decline or to say, no, I'm not okay with that, or I don't agree with that, or, you know, I didn't ask you to share that with me, or, you know, I would appreciate if you would respect my fill in the blank Mm -hmm. in that case. Yeah. There's definitely things like even implied consent to me is dicey. Well, so what I find interesting about that is so here's a really strange example I'm going to give uh, of like implied consent that people wouldn't necessarily think of. So I approach, I go to a door and I hold the door open for the, for this other person that's like with me. One might think if they are female presenting that my holding open the door is an act of like acquiescence of like chivalry of like, you mm-hmm, know, just mm-hmm. politeness, whatever. Um, someone else might see it differently. And the person who I hold the door for might think, but I didn't ask you to do that. Mm -hmm. Like I'm my own individual person. I can hold my own door open. And the reason I give that example is, it's really murky. And whether or not you want to say that, like there was implied consent for the simplicity of just opening a door. Mm. Um, I know it's not a good example, but it's the first thing that came to mind is like how people don't think about these things in our everyday lives that we just do things because we think it's the right thing to do or it's the social more, you know, it, whatever you may want to call it. Um, yeah. So, yeah, like I, I feel like people are unaware in navigating their lives where these things take place um, and how they operate. Um with it within that. And I, and I don't know if the, I mean, this the show is not meant to, you know, this episode is not meant to, you know, answer all the questions and mm-hmm. you know, solve world peace or anything. Um, Cause yeah, no, no. <laughs> well, it, <laughs> yeah, but it's a, it's a lot more complicated than, than that. But um, yeah, like I, I just think it's something that isn't really understood or, or known. Now, what I find interesting is, like, Damien, you were talking about, like, with events, like, with the wristbands and that. I think that's one of the things that's lacking is people understanding that there are multiple potentials. Mm -hmm. Um, Like, when we did this series before, and we did it um, about five years ago uh, with that whole group of guests, one of the things that was discussed is about how, like, the environment 
sometimes um, gives individuals an impression that certain behaviors are acceptable. Mm. And that's perfectly fine. And I think that has also happened in terms of social media. I think that people feel because the internet is quote unquote unpoliced, so to speak, um, which is really not the case, but anyways. No, definitely not. That, that people feel that they can just say what they want. Like they can, you know, um, out of context, clip something, post something, re reshare it, whatever the case may be, um, without there really being a, a consequence, I guess. Mm -hmm. So that's like the other sub theme about consent is like, you know, consequences yeah. for actions in, in that case. So I don't know. I, I just find it interesting about how I feel there was a time when people were a little bit more self-aware, um, mm -hmm. being held accountable, maybe that's the key thing. And now it's shifted differently. And like, you know, Jeff, you bringing up about entitlement, I was kind of like, wow, that really rings true. Yeah. Yeah. Um, hmm. Yeah. There's, there's, uh, Implied consent is, like you said, Jeff, a very murky, difficult terrain to follow, to, to, to process. Um, I don't like to believe there's a thing as implied consent, but I know that that's not correct. Um I just, I, I, I just in things in life and what have you, we just know that there's, there are things that are kind of implied based on where you are, what you're doing kind of thing. Um, I don't like it per se. I think that everyone should have a right to wherever they are to make decisions for themselves that they wish to make. Um, but I also feel like everyone also has a right to express things without I don't want to say without consequences but for express things within the boundaries and show that there is some respect involved mm -hmm. if someone were to say um you know I'll, just, I'll use your um door opening thing as a perfect example because it kind of you know it has a, some implications um so um you're walking up to the door and you walked in and then these other people kind of jumped in front of you for lack of a better phrase and while one of them said, thank you, the other two were kind of saying nothing. If you had yelled out, like, hey, fuck you, you know, kind of thing, you know, was, would that have been okay? I don't know. Was that what, what, what this moment needed? Mm. Not necessarily, you know, but we all know <laughs> some people can go to the extremes in what we would think are very minor inconveniences or very minor, th you know, situations. Um, and that's where, it, again, this that murkiness of implied, you know, kind of falls. Jeff, mm -hmm. you were saying something? Well, one of the things I think there is a difference, but there's plenty of crossover, like Venn diagram esque, uh, is the difference between just being polite and having or getting getting consent or giving consent. Because, like, what is bugging me, and I where well, I see where you're coming from is like opening the door for somebody um that's being polite you need consent to do that i don't think so i don't think that implied consent if they didn't want it you they can easily be polite back say no after you uh to say you go ahead and i'll follow sort of thing um the when you're opening the door for your for yourself and somebody's coming through that's just impolite uh, versus any consent necessarily. It, it's a different point of view, I suppose, how it is. So that the whole opening door thing just... Yeah. I don't think of any good examples. 
Well, so what, cause what I think about is there have been times when I've done something that I thought was polite or genuinely like innocuous and like somebody got upset about it. Mm-hmm. Like, it, so in the example of the door holding thing, it's kind of like, you know, the, the counterpoint would be someone saying, I don't need you to hold the door open for me. Mm-hmm. And in that moment, it's kind of like, oh, okay. Yeah. Like, like, you know what I mean? Like that, that's the, that's, I guess where I was bridging like these things together about how you were not expecting someone else to take offense to something that you thought was nice to do, I guess. Yeah. Um, and, and we know it happens. We know that there are people that when you're being polite can be on the defensive or be aggressively angry or upset with you doing something when you think you're being polite. But I agree with kind of I agree with the sense that Jeff, like there's a there's a there's a I want to say like a line yeah. potentially. I don't know how thick this line is per se, but um I think us three are of a uh an age and a um, raising of um, some of those manners and politeness that we've, you know, um, we've grown, you know, we've, we, we, we know those things. We, we hold doors for people. We um, say thank you and, and please, or um, we ask questions, or we ask for something before we take it, you know. Um, I won't say every time, but, you know, we have those, Manners and and uh, the word just left my head. Etiquette. There we go. Mm-hmm. Um, that have kind of been. I don't want to. And and don't get me wrong. I don't think we're the last age of that. Um, but I do think that that those are things that were brought up and brought into our um, lives to make us more respectful quote unquote respectful of others. Um we learned I I mean I remember um having etiquette slash um um not politeness but manners classes growing up. Mm. Um I don't know if you guys did but um uh, but I also there's a whole other potential background there that could be there. I don't think I ever did. I was, like, yeah. I was just a public school heathen. We didn't we didn't get <laughs> same here. Mannerism I classes. I wasn't, I wasn't in private school either. I was in public school. Private. I wasn't inferring that. I was just saying like, I, I, I mean did you did you have a class which talked about where you're supposed to put the forks and the knives on yes. the plates and everything yeah, like those that? Those kind of things. Yeah. Yeah. Had, that's had... that sounds uh like a uh a bougie private school thing. That <laughs> public school thing. Because don't get now, me wrong, I, I had home I economic did... classes. I but... learned that shit in college, but that was my degree in, in restaurant management. <laughs> like... Well, well that, that's a, it, that's an a exception thing. But... Right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah no, uh, maybe it was, uh, um, <laughs> I don't, I, I'm trying to remember where I got, where I had those. Maybe it was church. It's possible it was church. That's always, that's what I always might go to when, Mm. It's something weird and kind of bougie. Um, <laughs> I, I, I won't get into talking about. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Mm. But, uh, but again, like those are things, again, I think those are things that we were brought to, you know, learn. We were, we we're taught. Um, and I don't know if those things are still taught in uniformity throughout the country or throughout the world. Some places mm. possible. But again, um it it is a it is it is a like similar hand in hand kind of feeling to me. Consent and politeness and, and etiquette or whatever can kind of go hand in hand. Um I, you learn how to respect other people's boundaries. Um, some ways, not always, but well, no, no, no. I, the reason I stopped myself is because I heard you say, cause you learn 
how to respect other people's boundaries. And I, and I was like, oh, right. You have to be taught that. It's not an innate thing mm-hmm. um, necessarily. And that's what I find interesting in, in this part of the discussion. It feels like, is that something that American society has lost or um, has diminished? Like the ability to understand that respectability of, of X, whatever that may be. Mm-hmm. I mean, I mean, granted, not any of us can really remember when we were kids, but, you know, did you have that moment where you um, were curious about your, your, a, a female family member and you like reached out and touched and grabbed or whatever? You probably got immediately um, uh, punched, slugged. Not, I want to say some punched, sort of violent slugged. act. <laughs> you had like, yeah, you had like a, you had a no or a stop or maybe a smack on a hand or a or a a, a no, 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 and like maybe to the extreme, maybe pushed away kind of thing. But um, it happened, um, and I think we lost Gary. Uh oh. Warning. Gary's <laughs> sitting there with his mouth open. Oh, go. <laughs> uh, there you go. Oh, no. After these messages, Ooh, he'll be right back. <laughs> oh, Kids, no. If you don't know what that is, uh, I don't know what to tell you. Mm mm mm. How long ago was that commercial? Like side, that, side that was eighties, I think. Well, it wasn't a commercial. Uh, it was a. It was like a line. side. Uh, oh, what are they called? They're called eye catches. I think that's the general term. But um, which well, shows were those on? Was that a network that thing was, or that was um, that was the. Uh, Uh, ABC Saturday morning. Oh, it was a bumper. Ah. Bumper. That's it. <laughs> Welcome back. We were just talking about after these messages. We <laughs> right back. We had an entirely I, side chat. No, no, no. I, I caught that in the, in the live feed because um, I don't know what happened. I lost internet. Uh, but I obviously am able to see things from uh, my tablet, which is not using the same connection. Anyways, so I forgot where I got <laughs> suspended in animation it's for what okay. I was saying. Uh, I it's don't okay. remember either because we got we just kind of like a... we 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 segued and now we can't segue <laughs> back. <laughs> Just putting it out there. Well, no, that that's fine. So I, I think that um, the skill of engagement, of communication, of debate, of recognizing like space and time uh, of people, of individuals, of groups, I think that's the part that, that it's all coming into focus for me is lacking or has shifted. Maybe, I don't know if I want to say lacking. Maybe it's just, it's just not as prominent or mm. seems to have changed from when we were raised. Yeah, I can see that. Um, that I would explain that. so much. So we could basically blame this all on the millennial. <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay, so we're going to blame... Uh, so do we blame this on how our generation is teaching their children? Uh, the, I'm not consenting to any of this... <laughs> Laying responsibility in groups of people for, I just <laughs> so <laughs> while I don't necessarily agree with your generalizations, I don't necessarily disagree with them. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm not be being honest. fully fully yeah, serious yeah. about any of this. I know, I know, but like there is a oh boy. Um, I mean, there are so many things. There are so yeah. many things that came from ge- uh, about people from generations past that were great, 
great to have nowadays. But and then some of the things which were absolutely shitty. Fair. Okay. That it, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because absolutely. Yeah. So like for for example, uh Uber politeness, you know, uh 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 uh, uh, uh just just the the aesthetic, the work ethic, the the people working hard for to 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 make the, the American dream. People have forgotten the whole thought about the American what dream. Which has turned the American dream just gets more and more impossible as more and more people get richer, richer, and richer. But that's another matter altogether and a completely different discussion. Mm. Uh, so then the the when we have been affected by some of the restrictions, the the strictness that some of the things we went through as kids, then or lack thereof in some cases, like do you remember going out the, uh, or or uh, going out to play and your parents just said just just come back when the street lights came on or something to that effect? Be home before and now it. And nowadays, people are basically uh, having things on their phone to basically track where everybody is at all times, which is kind of creepy and big brother. But you know, oh, advances shit. in technologies to help track your children, and keep them safer than they they actually than they actually are. This is uh, all uh, gay man criticizing how um, uh, straight parents are. Makes no fucking sense. I just their kids. Um, I just, but it's, but way back, back, back in my day, parents taught politeness. They taught that you should respect uh, other people. Um, it, I mean, they demanded respect on their own. And nowadays, it's like kids, kids these days uh, seem to, oh, to like Lord. take their entitlement uh, up to wazoo and it, but some people are catching on to that that are even older and it's just mm. uh, or are taking their their age as as entitlement i am now older so i can now do everything that i want to do no matter what mm. uh, and people yeah. are it's just moving away from 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 consent and respect. So. Mm. Mm. That is an interesting thought and concept. And anybody I... who wants to call me an old, old an old bear, uh, I'll I'll take it. It's fine. I consent for uh, people <laughs> calling me an old bear for all my ranting. Uh, well, I mean, I think that one of the things that people p feel impassioned about now more than in the past is the ability to look at um like th where we are i guess just in terms of our society and what like changes have taken place or change that is underway and the discomfort that comes with that um which i find is an interesting dovetail to the concept of consent and communication is you know um yeah there's some presumption in the past that people were aware or paying attention and yet others could easily give example and be like, really? Cause this fill in the blank doesn't look like we were paying attention mm -hmm. or we were being polite or we were, you know, people were not consenting to this. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's, <sighs> I would like I, I kind of said before, this is this is always been and will always be a complicated conversation and a, co a complicated issue. Um, it should ne not necessarily be, but there's so much that we have ingrained in ourselves um, that it becomes a difficult conversation um, to kind of bring it into a little bit of context. Um, and Gary, you were a part of this. Um, so in the either NAB or World Bear um, Telegram chat, um, there was a conversation, um, a questioning regards to consent and what have you, where uh, one of the individuals of that in that chat um, 
kind of expressed they wanted to go back to the old days when you didn't have to ask for everyone and everything to do to do anything. And they were, for lack of a better phrase, they were respectfully shot down um, mm-hmm. because of their opinions. Um, I don't want to necessarily say it was a negative. It wasn't negative. It was meant to be constructive. It was meant to be like, while those days are gone, um, there's a reason for it. And the idea behind it is that we have learned that it's not okay, essentially, to take what you want without asking or feel you are able to do what you want with someone because they happen to be in this space or wearing a certain outfit or wearing a certain thing. Um, Or even giving you the hints that they want to do something does not mean that you get to pursue that to the end um, for your enjoyment. Um, So, uh, and this bubbled into a further conversation that was had during the World Bear Weekend, the World Bear title holders kind of, um, they had a online meetup and um, it was it was a very interesting conversation. I wish I had could have stayed the entire time, but um, I was listening to what they were saying and it was informative and, you know, it, it's going to take a while and you are going to have to face some personal, you know, choices that you've made. And, and I want to say to the person that did this and whatever, that like, I hope that they understood the reasons why things are now what they are. It's not because of some like wokeness or any, you know, the millennial or whatever. It is a, overall understanding and respect that you are you have a right to your own body and you have a right to your own um choices and no one has a right to offend those um to 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 and to violate that mm-hmm. um no matter where they are what they're doing so bear runs, leather events, um, nude beaches, cruising in the in the you know in the uh, parks, whatever whatever it may be, um, there's still a level there. And is it is it is it unsexy? to like ask for things before you do them? I don't think so. Um, you know, consent is my foreplay. That's a that's a shirt we're all wearing and it it totally makes sense. Nothing to me is more respectful and more <laughs> using the word tantalizing than someone kind of asking me. If I now there are moments where if I'm in a certain situation where I may not want to be asked, but there's an informed, again, moment in that, and I still have the potential, if I don't want it, to say no. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's... it's consent can it's, always be revoked. Yes, consent can always be revoked. Right, I think that's the key thing that I think one of the reasons why this is a little complicated as a concept for folks is it takes some some serious thought. Like you have to take a breath, be in the moment and be thinking and authentically engage in that. And I don't know if we necessarily do that much anymore as a human society. Uh I think that we easily get distracted and we move on to the next thing. Um, And that consent is completely fluid and it can change at any moment. Uh And I think part of the thing like you had made a little bit of reference, um, Damon, about wokeness. I think what what some people are finding challenging 
is the awareness of things now compared to before. We presumed so much mm-hmm. and took for granted and like lacked the uh, the concept or the ability, you know, to recognize another person's individual experience. Mm-hmm. Um, their authentic, you know, existence, whatever that may be. Um, one of the things that I think about that I find interesting is um, there's someone that I've uh, seen some posts from and, and recently started following on Twitter. And one of the things that they pointed out, because as we're recording this today, it's Mother's Day. Um, one of the things they talked about was because they are Native American, they talk about things from an indigenous perspective and about how they've been treated. And I find that very interesting because this sort of reflects back to, like, I think we previously discussed this, like, you know, what you were taught, what is in history, what is documented, like all of these things are relevant to our broader human experience and our existence, but it's awareness and who sees those things and what comes about from those. And, you know, the, the reality is, is that I think a lot of our nation's foundation came from a, a huge um, disproportionate uh, and very unfortunate disrespect to so many things, people, property, space, um, and that, you know, we are still facing those things today in 2022, like, you mm-hmm. know. Two, two and a half centuries later, whatever you want to call it. Um, so, yeah, I, I find that interesting, um, you know, where where people see things and whether or not they agree with them. Hmm. So, I mean, I, I, like I said, I don't think there will be answers necessarily that will come out of this. This is more of a kind of a just a general discussion um, conceptually because – um, as you were uh, pointing out, Damon, so that session um, that you had attended, I had also attended in which this was part of what prompted this. Um, now, granted, it was much more, um, I think, of a general uh, focus. And by that, I mean, it was in the usual like spheres about like kink and sex and, you know, mm-hmm. bo- bodily um, space, those kind of things. But it got me thinking in a broader term about how like, explaining this to other people like and helping them engage and and have some broader comprehension and understanding i think that's the bigger challenge is for for folks to understand that and more importantly how it impacts their individual lives um so that they can i guess see the model being exhibited in whatever their their experiences are the actions that are taken, whether they're their own actions or somebody else's actions, I guess. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> Obviously, that was a stumper. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. <sighs> so I think there will be more to come on this uh, as time <laughs> evolves and, and what comes out of it. It's very interesting because I went back today and I listened to those two previous episodes um, that happened to be COL uh, 416 and 417. Um, Yeah, a lot's changed in five plus years, roughly. Um, It's also interesting to to listen back to previous episodes and be like, whoa. Like, we, we, I don't know if I want to say we were naive or blind, or unaware it was just a different experience Mm. i think it it goes back to you don't know what you don't know and sometimes you you know what you don't know and sometimes you you uh know what you know and sometimes you know things that you didn't realize that you knew right right and so um you know, it makes me think about how people are discussing about like what has happened in the past, the relevance of it, and the you know the added to the concept of you know that those that don't know history are doomed to repeat it. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think that that's also a piece of the broader perspective on consent is that you know we need to. I I feel it, we would be better as a society if we tuned into that more, made that 
a conscious like part of the process of what of why we do what we do. Mm-hmm. And more importantly, I think uh, is that someone else helps us as we go through this process. So if you know consent is presumed and it's not given that somebody tells them, no, that is not okay. I am not okay with that. This is mm-hmm. not all right. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. and that's a part of that communication piece so that so that someone can learn from that and be like, oh, my apologies. Like I did not realize that I, you know, X, Y, Z, whatever it may be. Oh, yeah. Wow. That's a yeah. lot. What's that? Welcome to one of the most philosophical uh, episodes that comes out loud. <laughs> Boom. It's a thinker. Yeah. It is a thinker. I will say And I that. don't mean that you need to sit on the toilet and listen to the episode, but anyways. I mean, that may happen afterwards, but. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, part of the uh, post-show. Uh, <laughs> Speaking of which, unless there's nothing else, I'm pretty sure we can wrap up yeah. now. Uh, that's the end. Um, plenty of ways to contact us. Uh, pop over to our website, comes out a lot at com. She has an email and it comes out a lot at gmail.com or leave us voicemail at 361 CL Talk at 361-265-8255. And like Steve Summers did last week. <laughs> uh, you can also <laughs> find us on various social media outlets such as Facebook, Twitter, and, and of course on YouTube where you can watch the video. Um, you can join our entourage chat at uh, tinyworld.com slash telegram dash col, where you can chat us up right there. If you want to know when we're planning on recording these shows so you can watch live, you can uh, subscribe to our Google Calendar at tinyworld.com slash calendar dash col. You can get various accoutrements, which I need to go through the store because I realized that Zazzle has automatically hidden some things that uh, haven't sold at all. Um, Oh. You can do that at Zazzle.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Uh, the Consent is My Four Play shirts, at least some of the versions, are still there. Uh, oh. You can uh, get some of those designs were designed by a Smashy. Uh, you can get more of his work at tpublic.com slash user slash Smashy the Bear. You can also become Speaking a... of. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Sorry, Jeff. Uh, to interrupt. We have a new design coming soon. Mm-hmm. Tee hee hee. Just little tease. Uh, you can also little, 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 you can also tease. become a patron at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Or if you just want to send us some cash as a donation, you can do that at paypal.me slash Cubs Out Loud. You can subscribe, rate, and co- uh, review us over on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, Amazon, and Audible. You can find me anywhere on the internet as Box Hut, Box Puppy, Box Hut, Box something or other. Uh, or Windjum, W-Y-N-D-G-E-M, on Twitch, uh, where I stream Bears and Dragons, and occasionally I'll stream some Final Fantasy. Damien? Neat. Um, if you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me as TheaterCub79, that's T-H-E-A-T-R-E-C-U-B-7-9, on most bear-related sites or on Facebook. Or you can find me as Pup underscore Umbra on Twitter. Um, the Twitter is definitely not safe for work. If you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as Gabber73. And with that, take it out, everybody. Good night, everybody. Ciao for now. <laughs> <laughs>